Welcome to Dotonbori, Osaka, Japan. What we got here is a lively downtown district famous for its larger-than-life signage and oishi to the max foods. So sit back and relax because a wild okonomiyaki and takoyaki feeding fiesta is about to ensue. What's up everybody, just gonna start off this video by giving a shout out to Jareen. She's one of my generous supporters on Patreon and she sponsored this video. So thanks a lot Jareen, you changed my life and you touched my heart. Anyway, I was cruising and perusing the mean streets of Dotonbori, Osaka. It didn't take me long to realize there was all kinds of sick ass signage over here, all different kinds. Now I don't exactly know why and I sure as hell don't exactly know how, but something about these multicolored lights just blinking and flashing all over the place, it set my appetite going haywire. So I went on the hunt for a little thing called okonomiyaki. What's okonomiyaki, you ask? It's pretty much a buck wild Japanese style pancake that's especially famous in Osaka. Now personally, I got my eye on this mochi cheese okonomiyaki you see right here. Call me crazy, but I'm of the school of thought that adding cheese can improve almost any dish. Then again, even a lot of these non-cheese okonomiyakis are looking pretty damn good as well. I mean, I'm not even 100% sure what's in all these things, but it definitely looks fresh as hell and exotic beyond belief. Let's put it this way, when you find a restaurant that has plastic food models that not only show the okonomiyaki, but also show the inner workings of the okonomiyaki, you know you've got a winner of a restaurant. Now unlike a lot of the restaurants over here, this restaurant doesn't have any 3D signage action, nonetheless seems promising. I mean, this cartoon guy has a huge smile on his face, so if that ain't a sign of a good restaurant, then I don't know what is. So I boosted inside that restaurant and ordered myself a mochi cheese okonomiyaki. Now apparently the chef cooked up this bad boy in the back room, but as far as the toppings, I guess it's a serve yourself situation. I mean, we got a shitload of sauces over here. I don't know the exact methodology around this place. I guess everyone in Osaka is just born knowing which sauces to use in what order. I mean, I have some general idea of what I'm supposed to do with this thing, but I have a funny feeling I'm fucking shit up already. I kind of wish that maestro helped me out instead of letting me fend for myself over here. Nevertheless, I gotta man up and show this motherfucking okonomiyaki who's boss. Now maybe my mayo work was a tad crude, but I think that Japanese pancake is looking more oishi by the second. Now right about now, I'm sure that some okonomiyaki Nazis are losing their shit about some perceived rule that I broke. Well let me tell you this, okonomiyaki Nazis, I'm getting in the mood right now and I'm feeling the motherfucking groove. I'm having this pancake my way because truth be told, I am worth it. So I shoveled off a wedge of that okonomiyaki and wow, just wow. Something about the way that okonomiyaki is glistening in the light gives me an intense urge to jam that pancake down my throat. Only problem is that chunk is just a tad too big so I better cut that bad boy into a smaller piece. So after I resized that puppy, I grabbed it with my chopsticks, took one look and then slammed it down the hatch. Now, incredible as it may sound, the second that pancake hit my palate, I felt some feverish physiology going down. Something about the sight and smell of that cheese bubbling over combined with that oishi as hell flavor made me damn near lose my mind. I mean, I ain't no neurologist, but even for me, it's plain to see the second I bit into that okonomiyaki, it was like a Christmas tree lit up inside my cranium. I had all kinds of synapses firing off inside my brain, all different kinds. Now take a closer look at this okonomiyaki here. As you can see on the top we've got a layer of dough, but in the center we have a kind of brownish whitish layer that's hard to cut through. That right there is the mochi aka the rice cake. Fucking things resistant being cut up over here, what the hell? 
I'm damn near butchering this okonomiyaki to pieces over one piece of mochi. And of course, the white stuff is the cheese. You get the drill. Anyway, fuck it. I don't need to cut this thing. I'm just gonna pull this bad boy apart. I guess I showed that mochi who's boss. And wow, no words can accurately describe how buck wild this okonomiyaki actually is. I mean, even despite this uncooperative mochi, it's still tasting so damn good. Hell, even considering the fact that I almost assuredly messed up those toppings somehow, this is one good okonomiyaki. Why does it taste so good, you ask? Well, that brown sauce has a gravy-esque but sweet flavor. Somehow it combines with the flavor of the mayo, dough, and bits of cabbage. There's also a little eggy wig in there, and of course, there's a cheese and mochi that I mentioned before. All of those elements combine into one complex, greasy ball of goodness. Suffice to say, it's a delish dish, and truth be told, this is the best okonomiyaki I've ever had. It's just that fucking good. So I polished off that okonomiyaki, but I still had a little room in my stomach, just a little more. Therefore, I started cruising the streets of Dotonbori on the hunt for some takoyaki, aka octopus balls. I gotta say, with all this buck wild 3D octopus signage popping off left and right, it's getting pretty hard to choose a place around here. Although this freaky octopi eye place is mighty tempting. Now here we got a place where the octopus is so enthusiastic about takoyaki, he's actually helping to serve the takoyaki. That's a pretty inspirational story, and what do we have here? We've got some TV takoyaki promo going down. Seems to me like these chicks are chowing down on takoyaki like wild women possessed. Hell, they're even jamming the takoyaki into each other's mouths. Fuck it, if it's good enough for these chicks, then it sure as hell is good enough for me, so I figured I'd go to this takoyaki joint. So I cruised on over to the ticket machine and realized there was all kinds of takoyaki choices, all different kinds. Just gotta put this thousand piece into the machine, what the fuck's going on around here? Alright, there we go. Now I wasn't quite sure what to get, but lucky for me, the maestro suggested that I get the shoyu mayo takoyaki. To put it in simple terms, that's takoyaki balls topped off with mayo and flavored with soy sauce. So I grabbed my ticket and my change, gave my ticket to the takoyaki maestro, and he started cooking up those octopus balls at a feverish pace. Then the dude topped off those bad boys with some mayo, and I could already tell I was in for one buck wild treat. He started shaking some kind of powder action on top of there too, shit's getting serious around here. So after that, he gave me my takoyaki and wow, just fucking wow, take a look at those octopus balls. I mean, what we got here are greasy balls of goodness glistening in the lights and cooked to a crisp. It's almost as though the rest of my life was one fateful sequence of events leading up to this single buck wild moment. So I started to separate that first octopus ball with an almost animalistic sense of anticipation. Now here's a pro tip when it comes to takoyaki. These balls hold in heat like you wouldn't believe and to throw one ball into your mouth whole is ill advised. So what I usually do is I break that ball apart, let out the heat and then I eat it bit by bit. Now some takoyaki Nazis might be against that but fuck them. My goal in life isn't to impress a Nazi, never has been and never will be. I don't need to burn the roof of my mouth just to prove how big my dick is, let's just put it that way. So I grabbed myself a chunk of that takoyaki ball and slammed it down the hatch. Now the moment I savagely bit onto that chunk, I tasted the flavor that I wasn't quite used to. It's kind of hard to put my finger on it, but something about that takoyaki has a different flavor. A more subtle flavor. First of all, texture-wise, these takoyaki are a tad more soggy on the inside than the ones I'm used to in Tokyo. Now, flavor-wise, upon first bite, it tasted to me like these takoyaki were a tad weak. I mean, I couldn't quite taste much except the mayo. But with each passing chunk getting slammed down my throat, that flavor started to grow on me. 
I mean, there is a subtle saltiness with an ever so slight taste of soy sauce. The dough was also improving my life. It tasted like some kind of creamy, world-class batter popping off. And the amount of mayo was just right. I mean, it wasn't too much and it wasn't too little. I guess what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way is these octopus balls redefined my image of takoyaki. In other words, that's a nice set of octopus balls right there, baby cakes. I guess there's a reason why Osaka's famous for this food. Now the question remains, is this the best takoyaki I ever had in my life? I'm not 100% sure, but I'm leaning towards yes. I mean, I've had many a takoyaki with wild, untamed toppings in my day. But something about the simple, succulent, melt-in-your-mouth, no-frills takoyaki gets me pretty excited. Borderline aroused. Anyway, I polished off that last takoyaki and felt satisfied as fuck. By the way, if you want to see some more life-changing food videos, then you best be checking out my Japanese omelet filled with soba noodles video. And come to think of it, you deserve to check out my Japanese raw horse meat video as well. I got the links in the description box. And as always, thanks for watching this video. Why don't you leave a comment? Let me know what you think.